Hello and welcome back to the All You Need series and in this case all you need to make HTML5 games and we're going to make a side scroller using physics. Ooh, doesn't that sound fun? So let's see the game we're going to make. It is... Oh, it's a poor lost olive. Oh, so gentlemen are enjoying a day in the park. Oh, it's a poor lost olive. And we press this to begin our game. And there we have some hats, it looks like. Oh, and I'm using my keyboard. And we're moving, whoa, we're moving the olive along. Come back here, other hat. So we're on, ah, on a curved surface. Can we jump? Ooh, yeah, we can jump. So that's using the space bar. And we'd eventually get to the end. I'm not sure I can make it live in here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. The day has gone dark. Ah, oh, so there we go. That's our game. And here it is starting again. Let's uh, drop this down then. And this is made in Zim. Zim is a JavaScript canvas framework. And we're going to have a tutorial. I'm going to sh show you how to make all of these steps to make a side scroller like, like this. Uh, here's Zim, by the way, zimjs.com. And uh, we have an online editor where these games are available as well. And you can grab the code from the editor. There's a code section. We'll see that as we start our game. And basically, let's just take a scroll down here. Uh, Zim is a general canvas framework to code creativity. Uh, we can make things like art and e-learning apps and amusements, data visualizations, and games. And if you press on any of these, you go in and you can read more about it. So here's a variety of different games we made. This one's kind of like a Flappy Bird thing where we're going through the, the clouds. That also uses physics. And if you hit the more section here, you can read about all of the things we have, like hit tests and sprites to help make games. And physics, we'll be using physics. There's a games module. Okay, so uh, you can read read through that as well. And um, what we're going to be doing, though, is following a tutorial. And we'll put the link to the tutorial in the video. And uh, basically, these go hand in hand. So we'll be following this tutorial out on Medium. This is our second one. We also made a tutorial so far on how to make an isometric board game. We've got a couple others coming as well. So look for those. Ah, here we go. That's, that's what we're making. In preparation, we if you don't know anything about coding on the canvas, you might want to check out your guide to coding creativity on the canvas. That's a big guide that had, breaks down into 13 other smaller guides about all sorts of things that you can do when you code on the canvas. So you're welcome to read through that and find, uh, this, find out about this magical, magical environment that we're coding in. And it's all free and easy to set up. So as mentioned, there is an editor, and we'll poke around and show you that too. And we have a simplified version of a side scroller on the editor where we've just got these plain platforms and a little rolling ball. Okay, but it is generally kind of the same, except uh, without a lot of the logic to find out what we're doing. Well, actually, we don't have too much logic in this one. We're, we're just using physics to let it happen. We're jumping about. Uh, we do have a surprise at the end, but why don't we save that surprise at the end? Like, where is the olive going to? It's, it's fallen out of this tree. It's uh, jumping along some, some hats at a party, top hats at a party. And where will it go to? So we'll see. Um, okay, so we do have, this is the tutorial that you would be following here. We do have a link to that simple one right there. And here's a link to the full uh, side-scroller game. So there's also that available. It's basically the code that we're going to be putting in here from the tutorial, uh, but just all at once right in the editor. So we do have the Zim editor. However, most of the time we code in a, a desktop editor such as VS Code. And here's a link to uh, VS Code somewhere in there it is VS Code and we're going to suggest we'll be doing the tutorial in VS Code and we suggest you do the same. It's um, basically the same except the editor already has a template built in. So I'll show you that and we'll go out and get our code which we can do right now basically. It's in the code section so if you press that or come back to Zim here there's the code section right here 
and here's the template. Whoop. So I'm going to hit copy, and then we'll drop this down and go into VS Code. Pull that over here. Here's VS Code. On the left-hand side, you've got your files, and we've created a file called sidescroller.html. It's in a folder called Tutorial, so I can right-click on that and say New File, or you can do a file, New File up here. And I'm pasting the template. So there's the template in VS Code. If we hit Save, I can right-click and say Open in either Live Server or in Default Browser here and up it comes. Now you may not have that. Um, those are both uh, extensions. So this little boxy thing right here are our extensions and there is live server and open in browser. So you can just do a search for open in browser and then install. It takes just a second and you'll have the open in browser at which point I can open in browser here. You can always avoid doing that. You don't need to do that. You can go find the side scroller file in your in your uh, folders on your desktop or wherever it is and just drop it right into a browser and we'll open it that way. Okay, um, so here it is and here's what we see in that template, a draggable circle. This light area is called the stage right there and the stage is fitting in the browser window and this is outside the stage. So not Zim, basically. We can operate in here, so you can only drag that far. So we'll make the game in this fit mode. There's also a full mode for perhaps mobile, and there's a fill mode and a tag mode, so you could put Zim right into some HTML, etc. All right, uh, so we're in the fit mode right here. We uh, are making a new frame. So this is Zim. We're bringing in Zim right here. We'll need to bring in physics and that's going to be probably one of our first steps. But just a little bit more about the template. This part right here where it says put your code here, this part is what we would be coding inside of the editor. So let's copy this for instance and we'll go over to the editor. So here's Zim out here. There's the editor right here. Oh, there's the, I'm, I happen to be on the full game inside the editor, but we'll just clear that for now. So you would be at an empty editor like this, and you see how it says, uh, given the frame stage, this is sort of like put your code here. We put the code there, we save it, and there's our purple circle, but this time in the editor. So the editor already has a template built in. You can imagine the top of it with the frame call is up here, and the bottom of it's down here, and, and we're just putting the code inside there. That's it. So the end of the ready is also at the bottom of the editor, kind of can imagine there. So you're welcome to code in the editor. You don't need VS Code, um, but we're going to be doing it in VS Code and looking at it as we go along. Okay. And if there's any differences as we go, we'll make mention of it. We don't need the circle, but oh, so we can get rid of that and hit save. If we get rid of that and save it and come back over here, refresh, the circle's gone. All right kind of get it. Yay! So if we're editing in VS Code, just leave your browser tab open here. And maybe we should change the name of it here to, what is it, Zim? And this is Side Scroller. Actually, I suppose we may as well call it um, Lost Olive Side Scroller. There we go. So when we save that title, it will show up in our top here when we refresh. There it is. Zim lost all of side scroller. All right, let's go back to the, the tutorial. We talked about the template. You can, if, if you sort of, if we went over the saving too quickly for you, some, some people you know, just get used to all this environment. This, this tutorial is really for everyone, so uh, not everyone. Um, works through files as quickly as we just did, uh, but there's some instructions on how to do all that stuff here, including installing. There's information about the stage. Here's the uh, template versus the Zim editor and describes the difference there. Hey, now we're at the making of the game. Oh, I see. We've got two things that we're doing a little bit differently rather than just importing Zim. That's all of our Zim code. We're uh, going to also be bringing in physics here 
and pizzazz. Pizzazz gives us the stripe background. No big deal there. Uh, physics is a big deal. That's quite wonderful. That's bringing in box 2D physics and our Zim Physics helper module, which makes box 2D so easy and integrated right in Zim. Box 2D is generally not easy. It's It takes, I don't know, 20 lines to make a box. <laughs> <laughs> you would think if it's called Box 2D, it'd be a little bit easier than that. But uh, some engineers got to Box 2D and sort of split it all up into little bits so that you can reuse parts, and it's just like, oh, come on. So we basically make a new rectangle and uh, add physics. Um, let's see. Yeah, so we're going to show you that. Um, this is the first thing that we'll need to change, though, so I'm copying both of those. Okay, uh, if you were wondering about Zim and Zim2, those are called the namespace, and we have it set up uh, so that uh, what we do in Zim is, is global, and you don't need the namespace everywhere. So it really doesn't matter what you put here, because uh, we're not going to use it. This just brings in the Zim. All right, so let's uh, change that. So you see here, Zim, and this is just normal Zim, but what we really want is to bring in the physics, and we're also going to use pizzazz. And then in the background, even though we're bringing that in twice, the import, the way it works is it says, oh, I already have Zim. I'm not going to bother importing it again. So isn't that handy? All right, there we go. Uh, we won't see any difference yet, but that will give us physics. Now well, let's see what's next then. If you're in the editor, then you press pizzazz and physics there up at the top. So here's the editor, pizzazz, physics. Now we have both pizzazz and physics. All right. uh, if perchance um, you see these grayed out, you have to test before you get these things. Uh, so hopefully that won't be a problem. Now what's next? Physics. Let's add physics and the olive. And so inside the ready event, or loose inside the editor, add the following. So we're going to add some physics, and we're going to make an olive. All right, let's grab these. Boop. Copy. So inside the ready event, once the frame is ready and it's uh, fit it inside the uh, the window there, put your code here. Physics. We don't always need the drag. As a matter of fact, we're going to take that away later and use key presses. But if you tack on the drag there, or indeed do it, a lot of the examples have it in the second line here, physics drag. Okay. So basically we're making our new physics object right there that sets up our physics environment on the stage. And if we say physics.drag, anything we put in there can be draggable as long as it's what's called dynamic as opposed to static, like a wall or something like that. Uh, you can also leave this for later and drag only certain part, certain things in there by passing them in there, but uh, this is a quick way to add drag. It's a bit different than the normal Zim drag. So if you've used Zim before, we have a drag. It's very easy. If we made a new circle, we could say circle, new circle, dot drag, or well, dot center on the stage, dot drag. And then we could drag that. That's a Zim drag. And we have to drag each things individually that we put on the stage unless we put them in a container where we could say the container dot drag, and then we could drag anything in the container with that single drag. But this physics drag is a little bit different. What it's actually doing, uh, see in physics, you're supposed to let the physics do everything for you. And so uh, usually we would use forces to move things around. We wouldn't drag things. Uh, but what, um, what this does is it sets up a join, a mouse join, it's called. It's basically joining the physics object to the mouse, and it's a little bit stretchy. And that means that it won't pull the objects through other objects. Because uh, if you were really to do like a zim drag, it would just, hey, sorry, I'm moving. And it would ignore all physics and just pull things right through other objects. So with that uh, join trick, the physics drag... Uh, works. It's a little bit different. So we're going to drag this thing around and you'll see that shortly. Here we are making our olive. It's a new circle. We're centering it and we're adding physics. So that's pretty amazing. Right? Well, you don't know how amazing until we see it happen. Let's see it happen. So we come over here and refresh. Whoa! -ho! It fell to the ground. And look at that. We can pick it up and throw it around. Wow, isn't that great? So we have physics. It's not very bouncy. 
it rolls, although we can't really see it rolling. Uh, but there it is. That's physics. Yay. Okay, let's see what's next. So I tested that. Um, I just refreshed the browser window. Control or Apple Command Key R. And then let's see. Uh, we were dragging and trying it around. So we've got a bit of play time here where we're going to, instead of going on with the game, we'll just play around with things like the bounciness and we'll make a little ramp. So that's what we're doing here. Let's grab this stuff. Copy. And how much of it is? It's from the olive. So there's the olive right there. Tab that over. Uh, we have in this editor a format document. And so I've just hit format document and that does our indenting for us and all that. Also, I remember we had the drag on the end of the physics, and so I may as well put that, that back there. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's called chaining, when we put things after the other. And there needs to be a certain thing that we do in behind the scene to make chaining work. You don't need to worry too much about that. But note that we're making our circle, we're uh, calling center, and then we're adding physics. What it basically means is the center needs to return this object so that the add physics is on the object. And the add physics needs to return the object so that Olive is that object. And, and um, that's all done in behind the scene. Not everything can chain, but in Zim, a lot of most of the things that we do uh, use chaining, and that helps us reduce code. Okay, so what did we do? We added bounciness. And one thing to note is in Zim, we have two different ways. And I think we probably already done. Yeah, there it is. So here's our note. We have two different ways. And we call that Zim Duo because it was invented in version two of Zim, well, Zim Duo. And we can use parameters in a regular way. So here's another parameter. Like this is, let me get rid of that. This is a normal parameter where we say, hey, false here. So what that means is this is whether it's dynamic or not. And that's what we did with the ramp. We haven't really seen the ramp yet, but we added false. So now neither of these objects will move. They're not dynamic. So if I save that up and come back here, there they are. They're static. So that's normal parameters. And when there's another parameter that comes next and you have to do them in order. And all you do is put their values. But if we wanted to, we can use the Zim Duo technique and use a configuration object. That's an object literal. And so with the object literal, what you would do is put squiggly brackets around that and say what the name of the parameter is. Dynamic colon false. So you see that? Now we wouldn't do that because the first parameter is false. We just put false there. But if you want to get to a far away parameter, like the 10th parameter or something, bounciness, bound, I can do it, bounciness, <laughs> what a word. Actually, in Box CD, they call that restitution. And it's really like, what the heck is restitution? I don't know, it sounds like how much you should rest, but the thing is, the higher you put the number, the less it rests. So it's like, it's a silly, silly parameter name. It's one of the, one of the only parameter names we've changed uh, for Box2D, usually, you know, if people are used to using Box2D, it's a physics engine that was used to make angry birds. Um, if uh, people are used to Box2D, they'd prefer to have the same parameter names. But we just, <laughs> you know, we work with kids and stuff, and, and bounciness kind of is, is more fun. That's what it is. So for the bounciness, though, you put a number between roughly between 0 and 1. So if we went 0 0.5, we can test out that to see how bouncy it is. So let's do that. We also have a rectangle that we've made. And anything that is a physics object need, needs to have its uh, registration point in the center. That's fine for a circle. A circle, by default, has its registration point in the center. But rectangles, by default, have their registration point in the top left corner. That's the where the x and when we set the x and y of that rectangle, the registration point is what gets positioned there. So the top left corner uh, would get positioned. Or if you rotate something, it rotates around the registration point. And if you scale something, it scales about the registration point. So that becomes important, say, if, 
if you're spinning a rectangle or something, you probably want to put the registration point in the middle. And that's what this does. Dot reg center will center it both in the X and Y. You can you can do both if you want, but by default, if you just do one of them, it will, it will follow. Um, so another way to do that would be to say center reg, and that would set the registration point, but it would also center it on the stage. And in this case, we're not really wanting to center it on the stage because we're going to position it lower on down in the center, but towards the bottom. And then add physics. Here's that false, false for static. So we've used the Zimduo technique um, of the object literal there. And then here is just a normal parameter, not with that object literal. And we can put in lots of parameters there, and we can put in lots of parameters in here. In this case, the order will matter. In this case, the order doesn't matter. Okay, and you just use whichever one you want. And that's been very, very handy, and we love that for eight eight years or so, ten years maybe, we were, oh yeah, Zimdo technique, it's great. And then my kid said to me, Hey Dad. <laughs> that's not what my kid really sounds like. Hey Dad, Python does that. <laughs> I went, what? It does? <laughs> and so I looked, you yeah, know, seriously. Ten years we thought we invented it, and then it turns out Python did it. Uh, something similar. They have a nice one where they would say, instead of using the squiggly brackets, it's built right into their their language, they say this. And so they just basically say, hey, if you want to set the bounciness to five, do it like that, which is nicer. But in JavaScript, we don't have this. <laughs> so we, we invented, yes, we did, I swear it. We invented this, <laughs> okay, putting an object literal in there. Um, lots of frameworks and libraries will give you the ability to use the object literal there, yes. And 3JS, for instance, does that a lot. But they don't give you both. They don't give you either or. You can only use an object literal or you can use a normal parameter, as far as I know. That is available if you happen to come in from a coding background. That's available on GitHub as a uh, um, a function or a class that you can use to do that with your own works if you want to make this work. All right, that's enough of an aside there, huh? <laughs> Let's get back to it. Did we even see the ramp? <laughs> I've been keeping you in suspense, haven't I? We saw the ramp, but we didn't see it all work. Let's see it work. You, you, if you're following along, I bet you you've already tried it. So there we go. Oh, look at that. Now we have a bouncier ball. I'm going to pick that up and drop it. Boingada, boingada, boingada. And missed the ramp. Whee! There we go. All right. So there's physics working on a ramp. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Let's take a, a look and see what's next. Ramp. There are lots of parameters for this. And I think we're. Uh, you can go to the docs as well. I may as well see that. I'll click this right here. So this is Zim Docs, and we've just gone to item add physics there. Like that's what the URL was, and it's jumped us down in the docs. There's the add physics, and we can read about all of those parameters. Diam uh, dynamic, contract. So if you want the physics to act smaller or bigger, uh, or on a smaller or bigger object, you can do that. The shape. So if you had a picture of a soccer ball, and you want it to act like a circle in physics, then you can just say shape circle, yet it will be a picture of the soccer ball. Because the picture's, uh, it's a, um, a rectangle, basically, rather than a circle. So physics would normally work on that as a rectangle. But by changing the shape, you can change that. Friction, linear and angular, or how much, how, 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 if it slows down as it's moving, or if it's spinning angular, that's the damping. And by default, they're at 0.5. Most of these are zero to one kind of things. Uh, the friction only works if you're rubbing against something. So if we put a rectangle on that ramp, if, it, if we said friction zero, it would just slide right down the ramp. If we say friction one, it won't, wouldn't even slide down the route. It would just sort of stick, and you can judge, uh, base, change that. Uh, mass bits and category bits, don't worry about that. That's which things will interact with each other. Again, weird names came from Box2D, and we just decided to keep them as that because we don't use them all that much. 
Um, <laughs> bless her really weird. I'm not sure what we would have called them anyway. Uh, and then restitution is still around <laughs> for backwards compatibility. If you really want to use restitution, you still can. And also whether we added this after, whether the object is acting as a sensor. So we're going to see that later on in this tutorial. All right. So this is the Zim docs. If we go up to the top, there's things about the frame. Here's things about all of our display objects, including the circle. So what else could we do with the circle if you wanted to put a border on it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, right, components like buttons and sliders and dials, which we're not working with. And then all these methods, including the dr Zim drag. So there's the Zim drag, but that's different than the physics drag. All right, so that's docs and you can do a search over here and find out information. Ooh, we're making the olive look like an olive so that we can see it roll around. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, so we'll copy that code and overwrite the olive right here with that. Garky, 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 gark. Format document. I should learn the hotkey for that. All right, so there's our olive. What have we done differently? We made it a little bit bigger. Default radius of a circle is 50. Uh, in the last circle, we didn't even specify a color. That's what comes next. In this case, it's kind of like a hard color. We could have just said green like that. That's a Zim color, by the way, if it doesn't have quotes around it. So these are Zim colors too. Uh, it could be olive. So this is a HTML color, olive. And if we did that, let's, let's look and see what uh, comes up. So now the olive is indeed olive. Uh, what we've done a little bit differently is, <laughs> what we've done a little bit differently is make a radial color that has a darkened version of the Zim green and then the HTML olive. So it's going to be a gradient between those two things. Let's just see the difference here. There's just plain olive and <laughs> not too much of a difference, but you got a little bit of a, a light and sheen there. <laughs> it's kind of funny. We've got this, the pimento or whatever that is in the olive. I, I, this, this isn't red. Uh, I think the pimento is like a stuffed thing, red. And it doesn't really grow like that on a tree, by the way. <laughs> so hopefully an olive still will look roughly like this if it were on a tree, you know, have a little, I don't know, core bit there, whatever they call that. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's that's our olive. It's in a tree. And, you know, maybe it didn't grow in that tree. Who knows? Maybe somebody threw it in the tree. Uh, but there it is with a little bit of gradient. And you can see we put the other circle in there and that allows us uh, to see it roll. You know, that, that was the trick. That's why, why we did it. Uh, okay, you can now see that that circle is indeed rolling. All right, great. I keep on pulling this out of the way. I'm not used to coming back to our tutorial, which is like in the same window. So my apologies. Hopefully you're doing okay. We haven't really gotten started too much in the game. This will probably be a long one, you know, approaching two hours, I would imagine. So at any time, you're welcome to uh, pause it and go get a cookie, <laughs> go get an olive if this is making, or a martini, if uh, this is making you want something else, okay? And, but come on back and try and finish the video, you know, stick with it. Let's, let's get this side scroller made. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, it's a lot of fun working in Zim. Anything that you make with code that you know has any uh, complexity will take a while to make. Uh, Zim's got a lot of the, uh, Zim's got a series called Code in Five Minutes, uh, which is a lot of fun. You can find that out in the YouTube. Maybe it came from YouTube, but that's another series where we make things in five minutes. It's a little bit easier. This is this is a little bit larger, and so it'll take a while. All right, we're gonna try turning off gravity. Wow. So with physics, the first parameter is the gravity. So if we set that to zero, it means we won't have gravity. Let's take a look. Physics, zero. Uh, this is important as well because you can make all sorts of games in zero gravity. Okay, well, that's static, I forgot. So that's static, that means we're not, uh, it won't move. 
or it's dynamic false. And then here is our olive bouncing around. And so that reminds you of, uh, I don't know, pool or air hockey. And indeed, you can make those types of games as well. Okay. Uh, the linear damping will be important here. So how far do you want this to go? Linear damping of zero just goes boing, 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 boing. <laughs> That sort of thing. So that's that's why it doesn't keep on. And same with angular damping. So uh, the angular damping, if you didn't have any, this would spin for quite some time. And remember, you've got your bounciness. So you balance between those those things. I wanted to show you uh, just the effect of the dynamic with that stick. So if we didn't, if we set this to true or indeed delete it because true is the default, that means it's dynamic. Let's do this again. And now, now the stick moves. So you can imagine, you know, poking around with a stick or something. <laughs> okay, and if, if we put the gravity back, then it would fall. So there's the gravity back, and now you've got the stick falling, and you can play a balancing game of some sort. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Ah, Whoop. Whoa, <laughs> that was good. All right, so there's some playing around. And let's put that back to false, though, I think. I'm not sure what else we're going to do if we had anything else uh, playing around. I think we're going to try some forces. So we turned off gravity. Great. To finish off our physics playtime, we're going to add a couple forces. So there's two types of forces. There's impulse, which is like hitting something one-time hit and then there's a force that is like gravity so that's a consistent force that you would have to apply in uh, a ticker probably a ticker is our way of getting a frame rate like a request animation frame they call it in html we call it a ticker and it's just something it's an engine it just keeps on going so we've got a ticker and you would apply that force in a ticker or in some other thing like a, uh, a press move or whatever it may be Spin. Uh, spinning is like the impulse. Spin is a one-time rotational force, and torque is a rotational force applied over time. So we're going to give an impulse to poor old Olive. So we're going to like poop Olive. And then we're going to give a torque over time to the rectangle right here. So you're there. I think this was with physics or the gravity zero, so we'll copy those. Where did we do that? After the ramp. <laughs> nice. Thanks for that. And format document. All right. So the olive, we give an impulse. And this is the amount in the X. And this is the amount in the Y. These are often thought of as vectors. So 100, 100 is up and to the right. I think, or is it down? No, it's down to the right. Because we're still in, in Zim. Zero is at zero zeros at the top left corner. So a positive amount is down and to the right. And then with the ticker, there's our ticker, ticker.add this function. It will add that function to the ticker queue. And there's only one ticker, so there it is, capital T, the ticker class, and we're, we add functions to it. That's how it works. And that way that the single ticker can do a single stage update right at the end, and it doesn't waste uh, refreshing the pages and everything in Zim or well, lots of things in Zim use that single ticker queue as well such as any animation in Zim the physics in Zim the uh, dragging in Zim um, that kind of stuff all right so back to zero there and we should see the ramp being torqued okay so that's over time and then we should see an impulse force on the olive. Can you imagine what that's going to look like here when we refresh? Poof. That was the impulse. I don't see the spinning. <laughs> uh, something didn't quite work, right? Ramp. Torque. Did I save it? Torque 100 clockwise. Oh, it's static still. Okay, so it's not going to be spinning if indeed the ramp is static. So we'll set that to true or delete it. And try again. Oh, that is something to note. Okay, there we go. Now we can still push that around. Now what's neat is that starts hitting, and we can drag that around, and yet it's always got that 
Oh, he's got that torque force. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's like something swimming. Uh, and if, if indeed, if we if we put a bunch of things here, it probably could swim through a sea of olives. <laughs> Just be these arms paddling away. All right. Okay, I think that was the end of it. Let's just check here. Yeah, that's the end. Here's a physics game called Crisscross, where the target moves with a force depending on the angle and the distance uh, pressing is from the target. Let's take a look at that. This is an amazing way to make things move. So basically, if I press right in the middle, it sort of hardly moves. But if I press out here on the edge, oh, sorry, that, that, I don't, if you hear that noise, it didn't have anything to do with my pressing. Oh, maybe it did. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Get, yeah. <laughs> All right. Stop. We get extra points for pressing on the red. When we press on the red, it will go faster. No. My time out. When we press on the red, it will go faster. So if I press here, it'll go really fast to the right. We're only on the first level, so that's not totally really fast. If I press in closer, it goes less fast. Uh, that Oh, the black balls, or that sound means that it's now, um, the forces are increased. <laughs> I'm not so sure what that means. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, an idea that you can uh, make things move. There's also Angry Bird type games. Let's, let's close that one down. Uh, there's a slingshot type Angry Birds example that we did in, uh, I believe it was in a Code in Five Minutes series. So it was, we did Angry Birds, not quite in five minutes, but in four or five minute segments. <laughs> 20 minutes, 20 minute Angry Birds, including like uh, putting images on the buildings and, um, and stuff. So anyway, check that out if you want. We also have D-pad motion. So here's an example of D-pad motion. So if you're on mobile, uh, we don't have keys. So the D-pad here, I'm moving this around by poking my thumb or whatever on the D-pad and just moving back and forth. Okay. And so you can have two D-pads too. One here for left, right, one here for up and down. And that would be like a quadcopter feel. So there we are moving an object with forces using a D-pad. And the last one was Flappy Birds, where you basically are just pressing on the screen and that causes a, a Flappy Bird type thing. Oh, this is a tutorial, so we can't run it live. Now this is a, a, a for a certificate. So if you want, you can come in and there's grabbing the Zim template. Here's a whole bunch of instructions on how we can make something and apply forces. So basically what's happening here is every time we press on the stage, a force up is, is done and then it will fall down due to gravity. So you're kind of keeping this thing floating in between and eventually we've got some walls being made and it's like a side scroller as well. So there's us hitting the wall with uh, an emitter going. And the idea here is that you can do all this, send us the code, and we'll give you a certificate. Okay? So that, that's uh, to make the Flappy Bird type game. Hey, let's make a tree. So now that's, that's that. That was our, our playground, physics playground, talking about it. Because physics are obviously very handy for making games. And indeed, our, we have a game module as well. And that game module is included when you bring in physics. So, uh, there you are. Uh, and here's a tree. So let's get back to the game. We don't need the rectangle forces, so we can comment that out or delete them and also set the gravity back to default, take away the bounciness. So there's a few things that we did and, and we have a tree. So we're now going to build this tree. When we do, we'll make this trunk right here go all the way up and stop the ball, uh, stop the, the olive from going off to the left. So it's, it's going to be in behind here and it will have physics added and it will be static. And that way the olive doesn't roll back. And then we put some physics on this circle and make it static. These ones don't even have physics. So it's just basically a rectangle here and a circle there, both static. And that will perch and will start the olive sort of up here perched on the tree. 
then we're gonna add some controls, keyboard controls, and that will allow us to move the olive and roll it down onto our platform. Okay, so let's grab that. All right. Copy. Now we have some things to do back here as well, some housekeeping. Paste that in there and format document. So we don't need the ticker with the ramp. The olive uh, doesn't have any bounciness. Well, I think bouncing on the hats, you might want to try that if you want. Maybe bouncing would be handy, but I think it would be better if it didn't bounce, be a little bit easier. And then what else? Physics will have some gravity going down still. We're going to be adjusting some things in here soon anyway. But what have we got with the tree? Well, let's see what it makes, and then we'll talk about it. So we'll come back over here. I think it probably will make what we... Oh, it is broken. F12. So F12, olive has... Okay, we must have duplicated the olive. F12 will open up a console, and if you have a bug, if nothing shows up, if you F12, or if you're on a laptop, maybe it's a function F12 or something, uh, or some people right-click and say inspect, but then when you inspect, you have to toggle over to the console, so it's faster to figure out your F12. And then it's saying olive has already been declared. So when we did our paste there, yeah, okay, uh, there's our olive, so what's happened? Okay, uh, we brought in olive code too. So we have physics. We made the tree before we made the olive so that the olive sits on top of the trees. Uh, generally how it works is things that you add in Zim go on, on the bottom and then new things go on the top, uh, etc. There are ways that we can adjust that. For instance, if we, uh, there we are locating the olive at a location, but if we said dot bot right there, that would locate it and then put it at the bottom. Um, at any point, we could say top as well, but it won't really work. Like if we said, let's put the rectangle on the top here, dot top, it would only put it on the top at that moment. And then, then we put the olive on and it wouldn't, these trees wouldn't be on top of the olive. I'll put that off. See what I mean? Like, oh, great, okay, great, that's on the top, but then we add the olive. And so now the olive's on the top. Uh, however, the bot would have worked here. So you, you can use top and bot. There's also a dot ord, O-R-D, for order. And you could say negative one, negative two, or one or two, and it moves it up or down in the stacking order, layer order. That layer order is, by the way, in per container. Uh, all this stuff at the moment's on the stage, but you can put things in containers, and then the top and the bot would work only within the layers in that container. All right, so what do we do with our rectangle? Oh, we were going to look at it and then talk about it. Let's have a look. Refresh. Yeah, as as expected. Oh, I can still drag that. I forgot I, I, I can drag this around. And you can see that it's uh, hitting this rectangle. We're not going to use the drag. We're going to turn that off. But there's the olive sitting in the tree. Great. We made the rectangle. Make sure to center reg it. And then we positioned it at 0, 0 on the left and at the bottom. Actually... Does it matter? Well, maybe it matters. We only made it a thousand high. What does that mean? Oh, yeah, that doesn't matter too much. If it's a thousand high, we're, our frame is only 768 high or something like that. So it's basically going right off the stage. We, oh, we used center reg in that time and then positioned after. We could have, probably would have been better, although it doesn't really matter too much to reg center there like that and then position it and then we're adding physics and making it static here we are making some circles and there's a little hint here look we got these numbers is like well, how do we get those numbers blah, blah, blah. Uh, how we did it when we were making this tree is we used dot place so we made a circle don't know which one this is it looks like it's the biggest circle and when I refresh here you see how that's showing a finger now? That, these ones aren't, but that one's showing a finger. We can pick that up and place it. So if we wanted this here, then we look at our console, F12, and that's the location. So if we wanted that there, we could grab this location right here. Okay, copy. And 
place it right in here like that. Oh, with the dot. Okay. Hey, so save that up. And are you ready? Bum, bum, bum. When we refresh, it's still there. Okay, but that's not where we want it. So we positioned it somewhere. <laughs> Knocked the olive out. Uh, anyway, we positioned it somewhere and we did kind of one at a time and stacked them on each other. And that's how we did that. So let's undo, undo. And whenever I do that, whenever I place something in any of the code that you'll see in Zim, I usually leave it commented out there just to indicate that that was used. Uh, and also, if I want to go back to it and, and fiddle with it, then I've got a place sitting there. So these were placed. And the last one right there is has that physics to it with false, so it won't move. If it weren't false, you would get something like this. It may end up uh, spurting out from wherever it is. No, it just fell. So now <laughs> we got two balls. We got this part of the tree right here, and we've got uh, an olive. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, not what we want. So you get the hang of it, of the physics. Nice, huh? Pretty easy. And uh, we go back to our instructions. Bloop. Follow. To make our side scroller game scroll, we're going to make this wide background. We'll use pizzazz stripes and we will adjust the boundary on the physics. So the physics has a boundary. By default, it's just the stage and it puts these walls there. We can make that boundary bigger or smaller. We also don't even need to have walls, so we can get rid of the walls if we want. <clears throat> And we can get rid of individual walls, which we sometimes do. So imagine having side walls, but no floor. So then it falls down the floor. Or if you're sometimes when we're jumping, we jump higher than the, the stage and we want more room up top. We can remove the top boundary or set the boundary so that it's higher up. And then we're going to use physics.follow. Oh, we've got a scroll parameter. So we're going to set a scroll parameter on the physics to true so that the physics is, knows it needs to scroll. And then whatever we want to follow, we're going to add into the physics.follow. So physics.follow olive, basically. That's the first parameter. We're adding keyboard control, and the user can't press on the keys. Uh, or Well, they can press on the keys, but they won't work <clears throat> until they interact with the stage or with the canvas. So uh, the way around that generally is we usually put a pane at the start. That's like a pop-up window. We put it at the start uh, saying, hey, here's the game. It's hit start or a start button or something like that. Then the user interacts with that and they have keyboard control. The one issue is it's a little bit tricky, but we've managed to solve that pretty nicely, is that if you're in an iframe, that doesn't work. You actually have to click on the iframe itself not the canvas in the iframe. <laughs> it's like, Arr. and this is all for protection so that we don't capture keys as you're typing a password or something like that. So fine, uh, totally understandable. Um, anyway, like I said, we have uh, this keyboard control message that will help us with, with the iframe thing and that's in the pane. So let's, let's have a look, keyboard access. And then once we close the pane, we're going to add the control to the olive. So we don't want to move around the olive while we're looking at the start thing. It's just a bit, a bit annoying. And right, so once we add control, then the olive will move and the, the, the camera, in a sense, kind of follows the olive. And this actually, the way we did it is we move the whole stage. So this is kind of clever, I suppose. Box2D needed to be at 0, 0, and no matter what we did, we couldn't seem to get it to work if we tried to change that. So the answer is, luckily, the actual stage, 0, 0, the stage can actually move. We can set the stage X to something else, but then Box2D is still at 0, 0 on the stage. It all seems to work, thank goodness. All right, yay! <laughs> so there's our, there's our big thank goodness message. Physics needs to be at zero, zero, so we move the stage. Ha! Usually we don't move the stage, but in this case, we do. All right, uh, actually that turned out to be so much fun, moving the stage, that we made it so that we can do that on the Zim frame, 
even if we don't have physics. So there are some uses where you can move the whole stage around to follow objects, even if you don't have physics. And uh, so look for those as well. Here's what we're going to be doing. We're making the backing and there's our physics and we're adding the boundary to the physics. So, okay, this is the first part. Looks like we're replacing our physics here and we've got some backing stuff up top. There's our physics, we'll replace that. Uh, format. All right, so our backing is make pattern. This comes from pizzazz. We imported pizzazz and that gives us make pattern. We can also make icon, make shape. Those are the three uh, that are part of pizzazz. There's also pizzazz four, which is paths. We'll see paths later because we're going to make the top hats with them. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> still thinking ahead. We got a long way to go. <laughs> Uh, what was that about grabbing a cookie or a martini? <laughs> I think maybe I should listen. <laughs> Put this on pause. Um, anyway, uh, making a pattern is there. And it's going to be stripes. We're going to use a series. This is cool, isn't it? So basically, we can pass in a series of colors. If we passed in an array here of colors, it would pick randomly from that array and give us sort of multicolored stripes. Uh, those are those are called Zim V values, and they've been very handy throughout Zim. Uh, dynamic parameters, they're called. So uh, uh, look for those. And there's the size and calls. Basically, this makes a big thing. It's it's longer than the stage is wide by about oh, I don't know five times longer than the width of the stage. But you can adjust that by the various sizes here, or you could have this is just us being having a quick way to notice that the stage is moving. You could put in uh, scenery here as well. And I think we've got a section coming up where we talk about side scrollers that aren't physics and talk about a scroller in there. So there's different ways that we can get uh, backgrounds to move with parallax. We're setting a no mouse on that. That basically makes a bunch of vectors and any of those vectors need to be uh, could be rolled over, etc. So we're turning off the mouse and that just means, hey, don't worry about any rollovers on any of that. Makes it a bit more efficient. Physics. Oh, we're back to our physics. Yeah. And now we have a new boundary and our boundary starts at zero, zero. It's going to go the whole width of the backing. So whatever width we made there and then the height of the boundary is the height of the stage. We're going to be adjusting that. This final true is for scrolling. We'll be uh, adjusting these so that we can fall down farther. But we'll get to that later on. And then this is scrolling. Great. I don't, yeah, it, it won't work at the moment. It kind of works. And that, can you imagine what's going to happen here? Uh, refresh. I'll be able to, should be able to jump off. <laughs> I don't have keyboard control. What happened? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, right. We don't have keyboard. We've only got drag. And I've turned off the drag. Did I turn off the drag on the olive? Let's, uh, on the physics I did. Yeah. So, sorry. That was us turning off the drag on the physics. And we don't have keyboard control yet. So, let's just see how to get keyboard control. And that's the next step here. And then I'll tell you more about the... Well, this will then have the scrolling. What I was going to say is without the follow we'd be able to throw the olive off off the stage and we it wouldn't follow it. It would be a bigger boundary. Why don't we do that? We can quickly do it by just turning back on the drag here. Dot drag and testing again here. So we don't have our keyboard control yet, but now I can pick that up because we turned the drag back on and are you ready? Bye bye olive. Okay, that's just because we've set our boundary to be bigger it's no longer stopping at the edge of the, the stage. It's gone way off to the right. If I refresh, note that it's still being stopped at the left here. Well, first of all, because we didn't, the boundary's at zero. It's only this boundary that we've removed or made farther along there. Okay. Oh, did I grab that other stuff yet? Uh, no. Okay, let's grab. A change to the olive. So what have we done? We've added the follow to the olive. So we'll have to take a look at that and copying that. And the other stuff that we added is this start message so that we can get keyboard control. 
And all this happened at the olive, basically, right here. Oh, I went, whoop. Format document. What is that? Shift Alt F. Can I get used to that? Shift Alt F. I'm not usually copying from tutorials. <laughs> I'm a coder. I make my own code. <laughs> oh, oh, you guys can be coders too. It's all right to do some copying to start. <laughs> One day you'll want to code yourself, though, huh? Yeah. Well, that's that's why you're learning. Uh, or maybe you already know how to code and you're just learning how to do this specific stuff here. All right, so what have we done to our olive? It remains the same, except we've added a follow. Uh, when you're doing that, be careful that you don't leave. We used to have a semicolon there. Don't leave that semicolon there because this now is no longer chained to the object because we finished that statement. So that's one thing as you are coding and adding the chaining stack like that, sometimes you forget to move the semicolon. So we want that to be on the end there of our chaining. So we're going to follow and also set the vertical to false. Uh, so basically we don't want to follow up and down when our olive falls to the um, plummets. Basically we don't want it to follow the olive, although that's quite fun to see that happen. It's just our top hats. We didn't actually put them on people. <laughs> There's no people down there. So we don't want the, the end user to the player to see uh, a bunch of floating top hats when the olive falls. So we're stopping that from happening where we won't follow on the vertical, only the horizontal. It is quite though, it is quite cool to jump around and have it follow vertically. So if you didn't have the plummet issue, then you might want to just leave it as follow. And then as you jump in the air, uh, the camera kind of moves up with it. It's very professional looking. And here's our start message. We're setting a style. So Zim has style like CSS, except uh, some, sometimes better, <laughs> sometimes worse. Uh, but that's pretty amazing. As far as I know, we're the only Canvas framework with style for styling our objects. And so we're setting a size of 30. What is this going to be on? That's the pane font size, I think, and a variant of true. That means that lowercase letters will be like uppercase but smaller and then a backdrop color uh, nothing serious there and a keyboard access so if you're doing this in the editor you will need to turn that on you can leave it on here if you want as well but it won't do any harm but you would need it for the editor i'm going to leave it common today that means if you are in an iframe what we do is we actually if there's a pane with keyboard access we remove pointer events on the whole canvas so the very first time we press we click through the canvas to the iframe and then we capture that event and give the keyboard or give the keyboard access but uh, well it doesn't but the clicking on the iframe gave the keyboard access but then we bring back the pointer events after so that's uh, the workaround which is rather elegant. That went through a series of steps to get there, but now it's built right into the pane, which is cool. The next step might be, well, we don't want to do that on every pane, just um, so that's why it's a parameter here. All right, uh, we have a message, gentlemen. Actually, you could take that message and just stick it right in there. The reason why I didn't do that is because it made this thing wrap. <laughs> when it wraps, you have to a little scroll bar here. Um, so I put it in two steps just so that we stay within the scroll in the tutorial, but you, you don't need to. You get it taken that, copied it, put it right here. Did that. Okay, so a new pane. There's our message that we want. It's going to be black and yellow text. So black background, yellow text, and then we're showing it. This function right in here is a little callback that will run when the pane is closed. So when the pane is closed, we're going to give the olive its uh, control. So this is keyboard control in physics. Okay, uh, for normal keyboard control in Zim, we use a motion controller, but we don't use the motion controller on physics. In physics, it's a special version of it. And it's done with the control method like that. And there we are setting the speed of that control. Just be careful. I think there's horizontal vertical here too uh, that's different than follow. So if you just ask for control like that, I think you can actually move it up as well. So this will say it's a speed only in 
horizontal by default. I'm not sure. Look at the parameters in the docs for that. Pause animate is going to be needed later um, in that we're going to animate a bunch of hats. And at the beginning, we don't want to see the hats animating. So after we animate the hats, we tell them to pause. And then when we press the pane and close it, then we tell the pause to be false. In other words, we unpause. All right, so that won't do anything for now. And maybe we'll leave it commented out just for now. It doesn't really matter. It can stay in. It won't hurt anything. Then we turn off the style. Uh, that actually caught me. I made this down below to start. And then I said, well, we should put this up above where we need to get key access. Uh, actually, in unless you're in an iframe, it's pretty obvious how to get key access. You just press on the screen and then start using the keys. I think most people are used to doing that. It's really awkward, though, on an iframe because you can't press on the canvas. You have to press next to the canvas, which is not intuitive. So anyway, uh, this will help as well for sound, like having this situation for sound, because you can't play a sound until you interact. So usually that it's a second reason why we would put a pane to start so that users interact and then you can start playing a background sound or something like that. All right, let's see it work, shall we? Okay, do we talk about everything? We turned off the style, that just clears the style. Oh, I, what I, that's right. What I was saying is I did this down at the bottom and I didn't turn off the style and it was fine. As soon as I moved it up here, things were strange, like what's going on? And basically what had happened is it, it was applying these styles right here to things that I had made down below. So we turn off the style. Another way to do that would to say once here, once colon true, and that means apply this style to the next thing that you make, but not any further. Okay, so there's a few minor differences between CSS and style here. Uh, they're a little bit different um, in that uh, the style that we use in Zim, this style will be for anything that gets made afterwards. But there, there's all sorts of things you can do too. You could say, oh no, only the style for panes and put panes will only get these styles. And that way only panes will get those styles. There's things like classes, except we call them groups. So you could say this group of things will get these styles. And all right, so there's, there's other things that we can do in here to stop everything from getting them. But basically, if we made this style after the pane, that pane wouldn't get these styles. Where in CSS, I can't remember which, you know, if that works that way or not. I don't think it does. Anyway, CS or the style is uh, a lot of fun and quite handy in Zim, but that's not what we're here for, right? We're here to make a game, so let's make a game. Uh, we need the once. Oh, if you put the once in there, then you wouldn't have to turn it off here. Okay. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, so something, oh, I guess that's right. Is that what we did? I thought we put that right across in the final game, but maybe not. Maybe we did come that close. Usually we don't come that close to the edge. Uh, but anyway, gentlemen enjoying a game, uh, gentlemen enjoying a day in the park. Oh, it's a lost olive. Enter. And now, I start using my keys. Oh, look at that. I'm using my right key and there's our follow. So that's why we put the stripes there so that we can see that we're, we're actually moving. Something happened to my olive. I don't have a circle in my olive anymore. I must have. And are we still going? Yeah, bobbity, 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 bobbity. Okay, yeah, that's, um, I'm still holding. There we go, that's the end. And now we hit the end. There's a few different ways with follow that we could deal with the end. You see how it kind of hits or whatever. Uh, we can also make it so that as it gets there, the right hand side keeps on coming in and then it hits and then it goes back sort of. And it gives it a sort of a smoother transition to the edge. It seems like, oh, okay, now I've hit the edge rather than just like bonk, I hit the edge. Anyway, not a big deal. Do you like that? So there we are starting off with our keyboard access. So what are we missing with our olive? It was the second circle that was in there. And why are we missing that? 
Olive's there. Olive is a circle. Radiant color. Yeah, all right. I have to go back and adjust the this snippet of code right here because we forgot the like inner circle of the olive in there at some point. So how do I get that back? Mm. Oh, I think instead of doing that, I can go back up here and find it. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm in my other monitor. Yeah, this one right here. So I'll have to put that down in the code below. And that would go here. So let's do a check. There she be. Okay, and now that looks a little bit better where we can tell that the olive is rolling. Okay. So next step. Yeah, see that? Look, that goes right across. Let's have a look at uh, style. Did we do a width on that? No width. Variant true, comma, uh, width, colon. This would be the stage width. And if you just do the stage width, do we have the, do we turn the corner off? No, we didn't turn the corner off. So if you just go, the width is the width there, you're going to end up with the corner right on there and so that that don't do that that looks awful so we can increase that by a little bit plus 100 or something and that will get past the corner <laughs> oops that doesn't work hmm usually it does what would be the cause of that oh I must be doing the okay so we would want the, the width must be being styled to the label inside the pane as well. So we would want the width to be only the pane, which you could do like that, but let's maybe put the width in here. I think the width is the next one, next parameter, so we may as well not style it. But you see what we've done is we applied the width not only to the pane, but to the label inside the pane had that width and that messed up the, uh, the centering of it there. Uh, so that looks good. Okay, but a little bit more complicated perhaps than we need. If we want, we can just put the width as a parameter right in there. I believe that's the width and not do it in there. Now let's have a look. I saw a little error message. What was that? we go. That's the width. We're not in an object literal and we're back. Okay, so that looks good. Hmm, I think I had in the editor. Uh, let me just show you. I'm logged in in the editor right now. I want to just adjust that so I don't forget to do it later. Uh, here's the files in the editor and if I go to load a file, I'm looking for the game. These are my files. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, game, simple, isometric, falling game, orbs, lost, olive, lost, olive. And now I'm loading that game in there. And what was it that we wanted to adjust? The olive has the circle, so that's good. Yeah, I still see the circle, but it was the pain right there. Gentlemen are enjoying and no width in so comma width oh no um w plus 100 right although the gentlemen are enjoying look fine there it's not okay anyway there's gentlemen enjoying with the 100 uh, going right across all right fine so next then, we start talking about an upright character. So right now we've got this thing that's rolling about and we might want it to be upright. And let me just show you what we mean by that. I'm gonna copy that and paste it in down at the bottom. Uh, 
right now we've just put a rectangle in there which won't look very exciting at all so there's a rectangle and now as I go that rectangle is you see how it kind of tilts with the olive isn't that nice I sort of like that I can't jump yet but if we jumped it would jump so you can imagine that if this were an upright character rather than a round circle it uh, we could make it a sprite and have little legs that were running the or you know a run cycle or a walk cycle and indeed this next bit right here is how you could change the speed of that sprite depending on the rotation so it's sort of converting a rotation to a frame number and that would advance your and it also does a flipping so it's got a flipping if you go backwards it will flip and start running backwards so we don't have a, a sprite right now with frame set up but you could do that okay so that's what that codes about and here we're also saying side scrollers can be done without physics and this is an example in the interactive animation page so if we come on down here here's uh, an example of a side scroller and that's what we mean by the legs running and okay so this is a it's got parallax note that that sprite is just in the middle and we're moving the whole scene along and don't, we don't have a jump but we have a shoot in this case but a jump would just jump it up we've got a dynamo to make a dynamic sprite we've got scrollers in the background that are going at different speeds we're putting all of those in an accelerator and the dynamo in the same accelerator we're controlling the speed of the accelerator with the motion controller the motion controller is using the mouse position to adjust the speed going forward and backwards even but it could use the keyboard to do that or it could use a gamepad to do that so the motion controller handles gamepad as well like you could be using a joystick to move this about and then you could use the um, the joystick button to to shoot uh, so isn't that amazing all right and so that would be a side scroller without physics and uh, that that can be done as well so there's links to that right in here and talks about goes through all that let's add the hats Woohoo! this might be a good time to take a little break and come back after a snack or something like that if you want so the hats often side scroller platforms are flat I suppose but we have curved ones in a ball so that makes it kind of neat because uh, it's hard to stay on so we're going to do that with a blob and Zim has a blob and a squiggle. Here's an example, for instance. As a matter of fact, if I press here, probably it will open up that exact one. Yeah, it does. And these are handles and points that you can move around. And what we're doing is we're making, this wouldn't work with physics because it can't be concave, but we're making a curve. So everything's got to be convex, I suppose. Uh, it might also possibly work. Um, the other thing is, is when you apply physics, it really only draws a straight line between these points. So the blob itself may look totally curved, but you're going to end up with a straight line going from here to here to here, and that may work or, or not work. Anyway, the blob's relatively new to physics. What we're doing is we're mapping the box 2D. I can't remember what they call it, a poly or something like that. It's an array, basically, of points, and it... Uh, needs to uh, box 2d it needs to be convex so curved out in other words it can't come in like this it's got to be a bump going out and uh, we have some examples back here as well uh, do we put them yeah here so here we made a concave physics object by joining a triangle a triangle and a blob semicircle. So all those shapes are convex, but when you join them, it makes it concave, and that's okay. And that's how we how we made that. So you can try it. <clears throat> try that one out. Anyway, there's a blob, and we're going to bring a blob in and explore that. So let's do that. We copy that. This is uh, a single hat that we've got. And to start, though, let's see, do that back here. To start, this isn't really a hat. It's just a blob. <laughs> yeah, I'm not putting my comments in here. Uh, let's try that. Okay, 
remember if this is where we were. Do we have to change some things? Yeah, I think we do. So there it is, and we can drag these handles. You can also double click on handles and change what types of things they are. That's, that's actually no handles. And then when you double click again, it goes to um, mirror handles like that. Double click again, and it's straight handles keeps it straight but each is individual double click again and then you get controls like that you can delete things uh, shift click I think or click and hold you can hold down I believe it's the control key and both those are selected now and now I'm moving them with uh, whoa <laughs> that was you move well I can move them this way too so they're moving two at a time anyway lots of things to do with blobs and squiggles that don't totally relate here but what we were doing is making that hat. Once we make the top of the hat, we don't care about the bottom, but once we make the top of the hat, we hit code like that, grab the code from here. This is the, the point code to make that, or you could use an SVG as well. Just remember, it's gotta be all convex. And then uh, where are we? We're going to paste that code. So we've already got the code. There's the code right there and we're gonna make the hat from that code. So and we're gonna add some physics too. Okay, down here, grabbing the blob data for the hat. So there's the hat, we pass in the points to that. We set the color. Uh, we're going to be actually uh, changing each of the colors of the hats. We're gonna tile the hats. If they're all black, you kind of can't tell where one hat is and the other one ends. So we add some slight colors to the top hats. And we're also setting it to interactive false. We're register registering the center, scaling it bigger, positioning it at the bottom and adding physics that are static. And so that hat won't move. You ready? And there she be. Oh, we should get rid of this rectangle on there but there's the rectangle operating on the hat and we'll bring back well it's gonna roll off <laughs> well almost roll off <clears throat> excuse me see rectangle anymore running i think we called it that yeah now let's try that again okay and there it is on the platform. And we're not falling too far. Oh, I this running around a bit like that. Jumping. Okay, let's grab the jumping code. When the olive contacts some object, any object, uh, we're going to say, hey, make, uh, we're assuming that we're on the ground. You can adjust that and make it so that only when it contacts the ground, <laughs> it's on the ground. <laughs> but then the hat, you know, each hat would be like the ground for us. So we just said, hey, when it hits any object, we're going to use contact a little bit more later as well. So we'll see some more things that it can do. Uh, here's the keyboard. We are going to possibly clear the keyboard event, otherwise we wouldn't normally need to do that. But we would say, hey, key on, key down, we collect the event object, and then we can say, hey, is the key of the event object an arrow up, or is the key of the event object a W, or is it a space bar? Any of those three things, we're jumping. And the olive has the ground, so if the, the olive is on the ground, then we're gonna be able to jump. When we jump, we set the ground to false. So now it's not hitting anything, presumably. And we add an impulse force, a one-time force, zero in the X and up 100. That's a force that will cause this to jump. And that's on key down. And then once it falls down and hits the ground again, then the ground becomes true and we can jump again. Let's try it out. We refresh here. 
Presumably we can jump. We can. There you go. We can jump, jump, jump. It doesn't seem like I'm jumping all that much. But I can't jump. Like I'm pressing a lot, and there I am holding down the press, and you see that it won't jump again until it hits the ground. That's how we handled that. There might be other ways, but that's how we did it. Here was an example where we added an emitter puff. We're not going to use this code, but it's kind of cute. We'll just put it in there quickly. And we make an emitter, which is a bunch of little circles, olive and green, with a min and a max. So there's, again, another ZIMV value, a dynamic parameter that we're passing. And that means each emitter particle that gets made will pick from this range. If we randomized it outside, it would end up using that random number over and over and over again. We don't want that. So we want to pass this on through to the circle that's being made, saying, when you get made, pick from those. When you get made, pick from these. And that's randomly picking, and this one's picking from the range, both Zim V values, and there's also a series, so we could have made each circle emitted, get bigger, 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 smaller, 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 bigger, 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 you know, that kind of thing as well, stuff like that. Uh, there we are doing it with the angle as well. The angle is positive, zero is positive going along the x-axis, so to the right and therefore minus 90 is straight up minus 90 minus 90 is to the left the, this quadrant and minus 90 plus 90 which is to zero is to the right so basically we're saying emit this pointing up and that's usually how i deal with uh, trying to do things pointing up i just put the minus 90 in which is straight up and then i subtract or add based on that and we're starting pause so don't emit and this is a little puff and when we contact the ground, we're going to locate that puff, puff at the olive. We're going to move it a little bit. Why do we do that? Oh, down. Uh, that would locate it at the center of the olive. So then we move it down the olive's radius. That puts it on the ground, basically right by the olive. And we spurt a little random number in there. And when we key down, this is the jump. We do basically the same thing. So when we hit the ground, we puff. And when we jump, we puff. I don't know. We might want to make different ones for each of those. And in the end, we found it a little bit distracting. So we didn't, uh, we didn't keep these. But let's have a look. Refresh here. It's already puffing. And as I roll, there's some puffing. And I jump, puff, that it lands. It's not actually puff. Uh, I don't think it's puffing when I jump. Actually, at the moment, only when I land, it seems. No. So yeah, I think it's only when I land. What happened to our puff? On key down. If all of this hitting the ground, puff olive, look at olive. Move the olive radius, spurt two to five. Um, not totally sure why that's not puffing. jump. Yeah, it's when it lands. Yeah, I don't I don't know why that one's not puffing. It was puffing before. There must be something that's uh, gone on. If all of ground and key up, that's the case. Set the all of ground to false. Impulse, that's an up. Puff dot look at the olive. Move to the olive radius and spurt. Yeah, I think that should work. Uh, anyway, we'll look into that. We ended up not using that. <clears throat> um, and we didn't use the emitter either. Oh, I know why. You know why now? We've got... Uh, we already got the down right here. And it must be conflicting. So this one we wouldn't have and that one we would have okay so that way. <clears throat> and we jump in here and i jump yeah there's the puff when i jump now a little puff boing <laughs> okay good uh right so we're going to undo that 
We don't need the emitter stuff. We have the key down. There was something else we had there. Oh, the const. That was it. So we had a const down. That'll be for later when we want to clear this key down. If we don't want to be jumping when we win the game or something like that, we can clear it if we know. We can say f dot off key down and then pass it down as its second parameter. Okay, so anyway, great, keyboard, yay, nice. We can jump, oh, all right. Tiling the hats, we're going to tile the hats. When we make a tile, it's really easy to tile something. It looks something like that right there. It looks exactly like that. We're gonna tile the hat, 10 columns, one row with 400 spacing in between. And then the next one would be how much horizontal or vertical spacing, and we don't care about that because we've only got one one row. Uh, when we tile, it makes a container with all these things, and we're positioning this container 600, 300, minus 300 from the bottom. So in other words, they're kind of underneath the bottom. Uh, normally, when you position, you're positioning things inside. Like if I position 100, it would position up from the bottom 100. But if you position it minus 100, then it positions it minus 100 from, from there and then moves it, moves it away or down. So we're tiling these hats along here, but they're going to basically start here. The registration point would be way, you know, wherever, way at the beginning over here, but it wouldn't be at 0, 0 up at the top. So what we need to do is we need to move those objects out of the tile and put them on the stage which is at zero, zero. Um, so that's what that message is about. And let's grab the code where we do that. <clears throat> Copy that. Put it under the keyboard here. Okay, so there's our hats. We're tiling the hat, 10 of them, 400 uh, spacing. So that's the spacing between each hat, I think. I think, yeah, not the spacing between the centers of the hat, but the spacing between the edges of the hat. We're positioning them, as mentioned. Then we're looping through the hats. This is a zim loop, hats, which is a container, dot loop. Each time we get given a hat, there's another parameter in there, which would be i, that's the index. Then there's the total number of hats, and we can collect all those parameters if we so desire right there, but we don't need I or the total, so all we need is the hat. Isn't that nice? Hey, loop through the hats, get given a hat. Then we're going to add the hat to the stage. Add to will automatically handle uh, local to global, global to local, that kind of stuff. So the coordinate systems and place it so that it adds it like without moving it or without seemingly moving it, which is tricky. In the past in Zim, it didn't used to do that um, because if you think about it, the hat, the first hat's going to be at zero, zero. So if we add it to the stage, if it goes to zero, zero on the stage, that would be in the wrong place. That's no longer where the hat was. So that's what we mean by the coordinate system. Add to will automatically do that translation for us. We don't have to think about it. That's nice. Then we add the physics and say, don't, um, don't move. Okay, so we're looping through all those hats, not adding the physics to the whole hats there. That wouldn't work but rather looping through getting each one, adding it to the stage. So it says zero, zero, or in the zero, zero container, which is the stage, and then adding physics. When we do that, that pulls the hat, it pulls the first hat out of the hat's container, and that will mess up what we're looping through. Now the, now the numbers are all wrong. I, when I go to get the index one, it's because it just, just took out index zero, then it goes to index one. Well, now index one is actually the old index two and index zero, the new index zero gets missed. So um, that's anything, even if you were looping through an array or something uh, back uh, and pulling things out of the array, loop backwards, okay? So that true, we know that, that true right there means loop backwards. That makes it so easy You just say, oh, okay. That same with if you're destroying a monster and if you've got a containers of monsters and you remove or dis dispose that monster, loop backwards as, as you're going through and that way it won't mess up. All right, there we go. Uh, we'll see these, but it won't really mean too much to us, I don't think. Oh, well, maybe it will. We can probably play around with them, I suppose. Let's see. 
Well, that was weird. What was missing there? <laughs> My jump is really... I don't think I've got... <laughs> I think i got the right jump going on here. <laughs> What happened to my jump? Oh, I know why. Uh, the density of the olive. Okay, so at some point we were having to adjust for the density of the olive. Um, did we miss that in the tutorial? I don't think so. Probably somewhere we mentioned that the olive is supposed to have a density. Olive contacting. Maybe I copied a wrong olive from somewhere. I, I don't remember any densities mm, coming into play. Uh, we may have removed it. My apologies. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it must have something to do with the density. Olive, circle, olive, add physics. So there's the add physics, nothing there. Hmm. Okay. Control F, density. So we added it in the buoyancy, and it looks like it's probably affecting our force as well. So we'll have to move that up. We thought that it really only related to the buoyancy. Um, that's when we get to our final thing, which is our surprise. We're almost there, probably. Okay, so um, Olive, add physics, and we're adding a density of 0.6. And now let's see if we can jump up on those things. <laughs> it's like, hey, come on, what's going on with my jump? Oh, but uh, I still don't know what that is right there. What are, what are we hitting? And um, let's see, jumping. It looks like we almost didn't center red something, but now we can jump on those. Yay. So the density makes the olive be a little bit lighter if we uh, reduced it. That's a little bit too easy, though. <laughs> we just we just jumped. Oh, we're so good at this game. Boing, get a boing, get a boing, get a boing, get a um, so what we decided we would do is we would move those things about. And what is that that we got there? What do you think that looks like? Oh, we left our original hat or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, we left our original hat all with physics. So if we come back up here. Hat, 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 hat. Here it is. There's the hat. We still have the physics on that original hat. It's still positioned where it was. Um, and then we swiped the, the visual picture of the hat to tile it. So when we tile the hat, it actually is taken that hat and put it in the tiles and cloned it in the tiles. But this original hat, the visual aspect of it was gone. So anyway, we don't care about that too much. Basically, we have to comment that out. And sure enough, I'm sure that's in the code here too. Oh. Oh no, did you see that? Don't look. Spoiler. Uh, it went way the heck down there when we found the density. Where am I now? <laughs> Hopefully you're doing okay there. We got lots of things there. There's our hat. So did we say anything about getting rid of the other hat? Uh, we maybe need to do that. Where are the hats? Jumping, keyboards, jumping, down, tiling the hats. Hats dot tile. Remove the pose in the add physics. Okay, so if we're reading this. Remove the pose in the add physics from the original hat. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> but that's good. Maybe that would happen to you too. And if you're following along the video, then you know what the ghost hat. There we go. No ghost hat. <laughs> The ghost hat. Okay, so we're on now to probably the animating of those hats. We tiled them. Animating. So when we animate physics, we're supposed to use forces, and that can be tricky. We'd have to join each of these hats to a static or a dynamic false object. So we'd make little circles, make them static, and join the hats to it, and then we would apply little rotational forces through uh, probably torque or impulse, uh, well, uh, torque or um, the other one there, spin. And then to move them about a little bit, we and yeah, it just, it would, it would be hard because then they'd be pinned already. Yeah, I don't even know if we could do it. Um, so what we're doing instead is, it's easy to do with Zim in terms of animating. We, we've got the, we've got animate, which animates two to certain properties like places, 
or rotations or alphas, etc. Uh, which is very much like GreenSock animation or GSAP, uh, which is very much like animation back in Flash. It uses tweens and, and so forth. And we've got a great animation system for that. We can even animate along blobs and squiggles and set that so that we can drag along blobs and squiggles. Very powerful. Industry leading. Um, here, though, uh, we want to more like wiggle them. So we do have wiggle as well, and wiggle is like animate, except every time it finishes an animation, it sort of takes some whatever randomly we're wanting to wiggle at and then redoes the animation. And that's nice for us as well. So we have wiggle. And what we're going to do is we're going to wiggle these, what do we call them? Wigglers. <laughs> Oh, right, so the wiggler, what is the wiggle, wiggler? The wiggler is just a little rectangle. The reason we made them a rectangle instead of a circle is we're going to wiggle their rotation as well. There's their rotation. And if you use a circle, a circle would have been fine or nice, center edged, easy to put in there, but you can't see it rotate. So for, for you to see it, we thought we would show you it this way. And if we do anything different with the hat, no. I don't know why we've got this back again. Maybe just show you where we're putting this. We already have the hat animating. There's the hats. Hats.loop add physics. Hats. Do we have the add physics in that? No, maybe that's. Oh, yeah. It's more in the loop there. Okay. Well, fine. Uh, I think the hat looks like it's pretty well the same as the hat that we had. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing is as well is if we're. We're getting back to that um, different types of animating. We're supposed to use forces when we move things in physics, but that's a pain in the neck. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate Zim objects and then set the loc and the rot, the rotation and location of the physics body to the same place as the uh, Zim thing that we're, we're animating. And with those two things, you're not really supposed to do that. You can do it, but if the olive, for instance, right here, if it were asleep, if it weren't moving, and you moved with the loc of the body, it would move right through it and wouldn't even push the olive because you're not supposed to do that. However, if you turn the, if you never let the olive sleep, then the olive will figure it out and it won't pass right through the olive. Okay, so that's a force of God problem. <laughs> that's what it's called, anyway. Or act of God, I guess. Uh, but we're going to force our olive body to not sleep. So there it is. That's, this is digging into the box 2D itself. Uh, nice, huh? Set, sleeping, allowed, false. And for some reason, they call their methods with a capital S in the beginning. That's annoying. All right, anyway, let's grab this stuff, and then we'll take a look at it in the code. There's the hat, there's the olive, and there's the hats, plural. Uh, right, and there's the loop, so we need to format that. There's that loop. So here's the loop right here. We don't need the loop anymore. Oh. Loop backwards when removing. Add that to the tutorial, if I remember. So the olive body set sleeping false. Here's our loop. We're looping through the hats. We already talked about that. We're adding the physics, yes. And now we're adding a rectangle that we'll store as a custom property. This is our name, my wiggle. It doesn't really matter, or whatever you want to call it, uh, puppet string or something. Puppet. All right, you <laughs> can spell it. There we go. All right, we just called it a wiggler. Nice, huh? <laughs> One of these that come on, not even my wiggle wiggler. There we go. I'll say so. Hat dot wiggler. That means that we have access to the hats wiggler if we ever need it later, and it's equal to a new rectangle. We're centering the registration point and locating it at the hat. Uh, that was fine. We probably could have just center regged it on the hat, but uh, okay. So this thing's located at the hat. We're then going to move it. Oh, comment this out once the hats are connected. Right, we're going to move it up. So minus 500 brings it up so that we can see it. We want to see it wiggle. We're wiggling in the X, we're wiggling in the Y, and we're wiggling the rotation. 
Null means just start at its current x, start at its current y. We could have put null there or start at zero. And then here's um, how much we're going to wiggle it. 400 pixels in the x to 600 pixels. Every time it goes to wiggle, it will be between there and the y, only 10 to 50. And this is the time, the minimum time to change your wiggle and the maximum time. So you can play around with these numbers to get the hats to wiggle faster or farther or rotate more or rotate less. All right, let's see it work. And there's our loop backwards. Oh, we're not going to see it because we also have a pause animate until the minute. Okay, so we should comment that out. Kind of added that in right at the end of the tutorial. And refresh here. Well, there, there they are wiggling. Although one's wiggled so far, I can't see it. Okay, so that's the rectangle, and note that it's rotation. There's another one over there. They're moving back and forth, and so what we're going to do is we're going to put, like when those are down farther, we're going to put the hats at the same location and rotation as those things that are wiggling. They don't have physics, so I can't, I can't hit them or anything like that. <clears throat> okay. And let's see, oh, sorry, let's see that happen. So that'll be the next step. We're gonna do it in a ticker, so constantly in a ticker. We've seen a ticker before. Document, <clears throat> excuse me. So here's our ticker. We might want to remove the ticker, and if we want to remove the ticker, then we're going to store or this this specific ticker function right here. So we would do ticker dot remove ticker it would stop this function from from running, and then we're looping through the hats each time we're getting the hat and we're setting the hat's body loc and rote. We have in Zim a loc and rote, and we've moved those names into the physics object itself and applied a way that we can set the x and y like an act of God and the rotation of a body. You're not really supposed to do that, but it's handy in this case. And we're setting that to whatever the hat wiggler's x is and whatever the hat wiggler's y is. That's why we put the wiggler on the hat. You see how we did that? We This is a custom property that we make. JavaScript is dynamic. It means we can add whatever properties and methods we want to any object whenever we want. And we're doing that. We're setting this rectangle as that wiggler. Therefore, when we loop through the hats, uh, when we get a hat, this is that hat's wiggler. So each hat has its own wiggler. <laughs> That's why they move independently. The way we started this off, actually, is we made two. The way we thought we would do it is we made two tiles. And we wiggled the whole tile. Like each tile would just, like the two tiles would just wiggle independently and they kind of cross each other sometimes and sit in between each other sometimes. Um, but then we had to wiggle the rotations individually and realized, oh, okay, let's just make a, a wiggler on each one. And that was simpler or more simple. All right, let's see it uh, in action now. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, uh, we now have some floating platforms. <laughs> so it looks like we forgot to comment something out there. This is sort of what it looks like at the bottom. When, when, it, when in the final game, if you fall to the bottom and follow vertically, uh, it's, it's a lot like this. These, these, the tops of the things, and you're just like scrolling underneath them. Okay, so what do we need to do? Comment this out once the hats are connected. So we comment that out. Refresh again. And there they, oh, let me refresh and just show you what the issue is. As I'm trying to read this, I don't really want my hats bobbing about. So that's why we put the pause animate in there so that they don't start moving. Come on back. Apologies. Can I make the jump? Oh, no, too far. See, I should plumb it there, but <laughs> I, got my cheat, I got my cheat mode on here. It doesn't even matter. But anyway, I wouldn't have made that jump. But there they are. Isn't that neat how they, they, oh, no, don't do that. 
how they come how they cross one another and in crossing one another it creates a bit of confusion and they're going up and down and kind of knocking you about so you can see that i i fell a few times there because uh, hmm? i wasn't paying too much attention <laughs> all right good uh, next oh well there is that pause animate then would would come in here so if we add the pause animate then when we refresh they're paused so they wiggled they're paused when we clear this oh <laughs> sad <laughs> so up above we must have left that commented out there's the pain and there's the pause animate false so it's a double it's a double negative there pause animate false means animate basically or turn the animation back on and when we start again here ah there it goes okay so it's paused to start when we begin there it's unpaused and we're ready to go <laughs> wow and we're already almost playing the game aren't we so okay whoa fall so we have to deal with falling and we also have to deal with uh the end like uh, the, our surprise ending how are we doing with time we got about 15 minutes to hit that two hour mark well yeah okay let's hope we make it and coming on down here falling so here's what we're doing we're changing the boundary just a little bit no copy that bit right there so this is the parameters inside the boundary i'm going to change you're going to change too if you're following along you, you coding along with us <laughs> Ooh, maybe maybe not okay inside the boundary right here or are you just sitting back and enjoying hopefully you're enjoying have we got enough things there yeah i think we do so a zero, and then we're changing this to minus H. That means we're starting up a height, the, the height of the stage up, minus H. That's if we needed to jump up high. We actually don't need to jump up high, so I don't know totally why we're doing that. Do we need to jump up high? I don't think so. We could change the tutorial and make it just zero there. And then this would only be H times two needed. I don't know. What do you think? maybe because we're never jumping up over top yeah that might be good so perhaps we'll change the tutorial for that let's see if it works I think it should here we are I can still jump and you see I'm not going up past the top there I don't think I'll ever get up that high but now wow there she goes okay um, so if we didn't have the follow, which is right here, vertical false. So if I cut this out, this is default follow now. Ready? Whoa! So now it's following in the vertical, <laughs> which, you know, as mentioned. But as you can see, that's a little bit awkward with the tree here as I'm. Whoa jump down just have to wait for them to come back there we go oh anyway they start moving a bit too much we, we don't want that and therefore i'll put it back great we are able to fall down what's next <clears throat> watch out we can now plummet so let's find out if we hit the bottom wall and we can do that in the contact of the olive uh, the walls have a side property of bo bottom, left, right. So the walls themselves have a, I think it's a type wall, <laughs> I believe, or boundary, type boundary, or type border. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, they also have a, uh, a side property. Nothing else, uh, of the objects that we hit, nothing else will have a side property. So we're going to just use that. And let's grab the jumping bit here. So that, that gets changed a little bit on the jumping side. So, uh, which is in the olive contact. Okay, so we're wanting to find the olive contact. There it is. Right now, the only thing we're doing is setting the ground to true, but now we've got more. And format the document. So there's setting the ground to true. 
here is us saying if the object we hit, if its side property is equal to the bottom, I know that sounds funny, <clears throat> um, but basically it'll be top, right, left, bottom. So that means we've hit the, the ground. So at that point, we're turning off the key down so that we can't jump anymore. We're stopping the ticker that is mapping the wigglers. We're disposing the physics, getting rid of the physics. And we're setting the frame or the stage back to zero so that it goes back to the beginning. We're making a new pane that says, oh dear, the day has gone dark. Problem is, when you make a new pane, it automatically centers it on the stage and it assumes that the stage hasn't hasn't moved. <laughs> so therefore, if it's centering it on the stage and we're way over to the right, we don't see it. So that's why we're setting the stage X back to zero. But if we don't turn these things off, then that's going to affect the stage X. <laughs> For instance, we put it back to zero and then we use the keyboard, we start rolling and the pane would start rolling away, uh, etc. So that, um, or the ticker would try and whatever, blah, blah, blah. So that seems like a lot of things to do to end. Uh, we probably could have gotten around that somehow, like create the pane and then position the pane at the current location, kind of, or the minus the stage's X position. But it doesn't hurt to see how to turn things off because that's sometimes how you restart a game as well as you, you might want to turn things off and turn them back on. Uh, we're doing a, a poor person's reload here. so. That's, that's what we're doing. We, got, we show that, oh, it's broken. And then this is the function, the callback inside the show. This is the function that will run when we hide it. Uh, it's a little bit awkward, but it makes it quite easy. You can also store this in a variable, my pain or end pain, and then say end pain dot on close, call this function. But the, this callback has made it a little bit easier for us. And that's what we're using. And then we're reloading the page. That's the JavaScript reload the location. You could also go ZGO side scroller index or side scroller.html and it would go to that as an option. Let's see it work. And we refresh here. Okay, I haven't fallen and bing. So I hit the bottom down there. Oh dear, the day has gone dark. When I clear, it reloads. So there's a little bit of a flash there as the HTML page reloads. If you want to avoid that, then you would have to restart everything manually, kind of. Uh, you know, it's not that bad, but there's a few steps involved. So we did the poor person's restart, uh, the lazy, lazy person's restart, we'll call it. <laughs> um, good. Okay. Uh, what's next? Put it back here. Surprise ending! We've hit the ending! Dum dum dum! So where would the olive be going? Maybe you spotted this as we were scrolling down. How about inside a glass of vodka? So we could use the same blob path as a vodka glass. A martini glass might have been good. Uh, and we're going to see buoyancy, so that's neat. Okay. Uh, we also liked being able to jump out of the box, so rather than ending the game, we'll just give a little reward of an emitter as we fall into the glass, but let them play around. So they could even jump out of the glass and back up into the uh, onto the hats if they wanted to. So here's the glass right here. Let's copy this. We'll talk about it once we get in there. I copy that. It also, I think it's saying that it would be good to... Uh, turn off the hats and the ticker and we're going to talk we're going to comment them out and we're also going to comment out the losing so that we don't have to worry about that right so we're going to instead of having to go all the way to the end and to see our reward that takes a long time to test or to to, to test it then we're going to comment out the hit test here so that we don't lose and I don't know if we really need to do that and comment out the hats so that's from the hats and the ticker it said so there's the ticker right, comment out all that stuff as well so the hats to the ticker we'll have to bring that back and then I'm going to paste that in there and format the document let's see what it looks like and then we'll come back and talk about it <clears throat> There it is. So we've made a glass. Notice the hats are gone. 
we made a glass and when we roll this in oh okay so there's the glass but we've we're going to need the that message to go away as we test this because we want to get to the end fast eventually and we don't want to keep on dying and stuff so there, the fastest way to get to the end to test our glass is to just jump hit the bottom and roll all the way along to the end <laughs> so uh, that's what we'll be doing we don't want the die message every time so there's the ha uh, the glass note that it's <laughs> did we cheat or what it's the same shape as the as the hats we've just changed the the look of it and we also added another one inside that represents our liquid that's in the glass uh, next we're going to add some buoyancy but let's see how we made that cup it's the same blob same points there or, well the cup is a new blob i guess but with the same points and our color is a radial color from white to gray and that's it's giving it that plus the alpha so we've reduced the alpha Increase the scale a little bit on it, make sure it's center edged. Centered it on the stage just for now. Is that actually centered on the stage? Doesn't look like it. Um, oh, move the cup. So we've moved the cup a certain amount and cup shift. All right, so we haven't moved it, but later, once we get to the end of the game, we'll change this to a big number and then the cup will go way over to the right and all the parts of the cup will move with it. So that's why we put a little cup shift thing there. We've said dynamic false and we've added it as a sensor. So what a sensor does is it, it will get contact. So when the, mark, uh, when the olive hits the glass, it will still register a contact, but it won't get collision. So a sensor just says, hey, I know something's on me, but I'm not going to collide with it. Isn't that cool? So that's a sensor setting when you add physics. Here's the vodka in the cup, roughly the same. It's just a little bit smaller and we've moved it down in the cup. Then we have to make two walls. So the walls in the cup are right here, right here and right here. That's so that when the olive is floating in here, it, we can't move past the walls. We don't have to worry about going down because we're gonna add this thing called buoyancy. And then we'll be able to jump out of the cup so we don't need to worry about a wall on the top. Jump out of the cup and then we hit the edges of the cup. But it's really from the inside that's what we're, we're worried about. So there they are. Make sure the registration point's centered. We located them in there and we added physics. Those are static. Okay, so great. Those rectangles are on the stage as well so that the physics will work on them. Don't add the rectangles to the cup and add the physics to the rectangles because then they won't be at a zero, in, in a zero, zero container. Okay, so we have to build them on the stage and put them into place. Probably we used place for those. All right, great. Next. Buoyancy. Go to the olive code, not density. Okay, so we'll have to shift this in the tutorial. I forgot that the density also affected the, um, the jumping abilities. So we'll mention that earlier in our tutorial. And then uh, this is, that's the change to the olive. We've already done that. So then beneath the glass code, add buoyancy. This is the last step, folks. So yay, buoyancy.add olive. We don't really want to do that so well, it's almost the last step we have to go and remove the and bring back some things okay but we're close um grab that buoyancy buoyancy is how much it floats uh, put this down here mm, format document so physics.buoyancy, this is how much from the bottom it is. Buoyancy is almost always at the bottom. So how much up from the bottom it is. And by default, it's zero, I think, like at the bottom. Uh, and then this is the density of the liquid. So by changing the density of the liquid and the density of the objects that are in the liquid, you can sort of say where they're going to float, how high up they'll float, and also how much sort of force it goes, boom, you know, like wobble, 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 like it, uh, it's buoyant, <laughs> uh, how much it goes up and down. So you play around with that. We store that in an object, 
uh, are in a variable because we can then add various things or remove things from this buoyancy level. This goes right across your physics. It's not only in the cup, it's just like right across at level 45, or 45 pixels up from the bottom. And we're adding the olive. Okay, let's see. Oh, cool. And there I am jumping out. And note that I'm still buoyant here, except I didn't hit the ground, so I can't move my arrows anymore. Ah, oh, that's too bad. All right, so if I come in here, what we've done is um, uh, I can move my arrows here. I can't remember exactly why. I think, oh, that's right. I think we sort of made it don't worry about hitting anything when you're in the cup. I can't remember if we've done that. We'll check. But see how I'm hitting the wall there? And I jump. So when I jump up, I remove the buoyancy. <clears throat> and we don't know anything about that yet. Well, okay, let's let's uh, carry on with the tutorial and sort of see where we're at then. And that's in here. But we're floating everywhere. So remove the buoyancy dot add olive. Okay, that's kind of important. So important that I think I'll do it right now. We don't want to add the buoyancy here. We're only going to add the buoyancy when we're in the cup. Okay. So we're going to go back up to the contact code and uh, add a, this thing right here. This stuff. So set the ground pro. We did the ground property to true. What's that bracket doing there? Olive dot olive uh, beginning contact olive that contact olive. I think that's wrong that thing right there this is part of that one it's not part of that one it looks yeah it looks like we copied and pasted in there so we'll fix that up this part right here oh no that's end contact okay that's that's all right then so sorry about that this is the end of contact and there that's what we're adding okay so we're adding this little bit in the contact and then we're also adding end of contact underneath there so I suppose we probably just copy all this and go take a look at it where I can see it better. Uh, both of us, and we all can see it better. So where was that? In the contact? Did we comment out the contact? No, that's the hats wiggling. Yeah, I think the comments are all good. Paste and format document. All right, so that's what we had commented out for our losing. We added if the object is a is equal to the cup. So if we've contacted the cup, remember the cup is a sensor. We don't actually hit it, but we uh, we go over the sensor, and so that counts as a contact. So if it's a cup, then add the olive to the buoyancy. That's pretty easy. And then olive.contact end. This is on contact. This is on contact end. So when we stop contacting an object, if that object is a cup, we'll remove the olive from the buoyancy. Okay, cool. So when we hit it, we add the olive to the buoyancy. When we out of it, we remove it from the buoyancy. And dum dum dum, we save that up and we get the following. Whoop. We jump. We we're in, we're out. Oh, and then down we go. Okay. In and out. Winning. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we had a win check. Hats back. Conclusion. Okay. We hit the two, two, two hour mark two. Oh, winning. I lost. We lose in, in making the tutorial. And uh, certainly if you've been here this long, you'll want to see how we end this. Huh? Brum, bum, bum. All right. So that was a winning, right? If we land in the cup, we would like to give a reward. We could also add a timer to this to find out how long it took us to get to the cup and a leaderboard. We've got some other tutorials which we're going to show the timer and the leaderboard as well. I think the last tutorial we did, we had a timer, but in a future upcoming one, we've got a leaderboard as well. Those are built into the Zim game module. So we're going to make a win check and only show the emitter once when we win. We don't want every time we land in the cup to have the reward, so we want this only to happen once. And we'll put that out here called a win check. And let's put that out here at the top. That was above the contact. Boop, a win check. And the other difference is um, 
doing the wind check here. So, uh, right. Let's under the ground. We had a little bug where. All right. So if we've already wind, if we've already won wind. <laughs> we've already wind is that game. Uh, if we've already won the game, then we don't do this, but we still want to do the ground. That was our bug that caused a little bit of a problem at one point. We couldn't jump after we won when we put this up above it. So if, uh, right, then we're going to set the wind check to true and show the emitter. Uh, might make more sense possibly. It doesn't make any difference, but we do the emitter and then set the wind check to true saying, yeah, we won, yeah. So the emitter, uh, did we make an emitter somewhere? What emitter is this? Do you see an emitter anywhere? <laughs> I don't see an emitter. <laughs> do, we, do we have an emitter? Uh, all of, I'm just scrolling through. I, don't, I think we forgot the emitter. Oh, that's it. It's a Zim default emitter. My apologies. Just that's a basic Zim emitter. And we're going to spurt that um, for a while. Not that long. Is it really that long? 20? No, for 20. There <laughs> we go. Oopsies. Well, isn't this good? So we've made a draft of the tutorial, and this is us going through the tutorial, doing the video, and we have um, something that we'll need to update. Will we remember? Hard to tell. Uh, I think there's been a few things throughout here, and, and they're kind of little things like that. So anyway, we only want to spurt 20 times. Uh, one, 120 was, um, I don't know, I was just checking something. All right, so there we go, and that's it. Okay, let's see what happens when we go in the cup. Then we should get the emitter spurting, and only once. So we refresh here. Hmm, that's not good. <laughs> uh, right, what's that? If object equals the cup, olive remove. Where's the emitter? Did we put this in the if it's a cup? No, we didn't. Okay, so it's got to be if it's in the cup. Like that. And then we have to move this up above here. So we'll check on our tutorial to make sure that we got the code right there. So yeah, we, we only want to win if we're in the cup. Now let's try this again. Refresh. So here we are. We're not in the cup. We're not winning. Oh, we're in the cup. And note that I can jump out of the cup uh, and it doesn't redo it. So only that first time when we jump in the cup. Whoa, did we get that little reward winning? Might want to bring that down a little bit. I'm not sure it's right on the tip of the cup. That's okay, but that would be right in here. Let's try moving it to 60 and see if we like it better. Refresh. Yeah. Good. Anything else then? Bum, bum, bum. So where did we put that win? Uh, at the call of, yeah. oh, no, it's down here. Yeah, it is in the cup. So there's the cup. And I just didn't copy and paste in the right place. There's the cup. There's the olive crown. Okay, so we're good in the tutorial. And that's what it looks like. We have to put the hats back. <clears throat> And here's what we did to shift the glass. So put the hats back. Did we tell it, uncomment the hat code, uh, uncomment the lose code, and this is the shifting of the glass. So let's do that. I don't know if we're gonna be able to play the whole thing. Shifting of the glass. So we gotta bring the hats back. Hats all the way. Control slash. Control slash is what I'm doing to get that. Is it alt slash? Whatever. Uh, it might be alt slash. I think it's control slash. It depends on your settings. I came from Adam, so I think I switched it, and you guys will have your own. Um, there's the glass. So there's the cup shift. Now, put that in here like that. Leave the comment. Mm, ah, whatever. Doesn't matter. So we're taking, going all the way to the end of the backing width, and we're subtracting a certain amount to bring the cup back. 
it just was a little bit of te testing to find out where that uh, where that cup should be. As a matter of fact, so here here's how we did it. We if we refresh here now, uh, we we died in a sense. There we go. And I'm gonna scroll all the way through. I'm cheating. I'm scrolling along the bottom because we still don't we we haven't taken out the error message. There's the cup right there. And scrolling back. So basically we want it, yeah, there's there's the hat. See how the hat is approaching the cup? We don't want the hat to go over the cup, but we want the hat close enough so that when it's when we're in the middle here, we can see the cup and kind of jump into it. And so that's the cup. We'll do the win. I'll try just quickly, but if I can't if I can't win this very first time, we'll probably have to let you win. I'm gonna. Oh no! Okay, if we're not gonna. I, I I thought a leap of faith there, and it didn't work out. I'll try one one more time to get all the way across without doing a leap of faith. Oh no! Oh, okay. Um. Anyway, <laughs> it certainly can't be done. Uh, and we'll let you try. <laughs> if I wasn't rushing, I'd be sitting around on each hat until I saw another hat coming. Then I would jump. But uh, there you go. Um, did you have fun? And let's. We did the uncommenting. There's the conclusion. We did make a lone droid where you're jumping through these caves and stuff and you've got parallax in the back and sound and scores and leaderboards. That's a lone droid too, the neon caves. And a lone droid is this sort of platforms are going up and down and you can get squeezed. Uh, you've got a tether that you can jump on. So you can check those out. Uh, there's... There's another tutorial right there. And as, as we're adding tutorials, we'll probably come back in here and link to other tutorials as well. But that was our previous one on an isometric board. There's all sorts of Zim features that you can look at. Uh, oh, this is the about though. So uh, the features are in here. There they are. And then also uh, the game banner, for instance. So this is clicking on the game banner. I think we showed you this with all the different types of games that are in here. There's the kind of isometric board. That one was a maze, I think, that we made through that. That's the platformer right there with the tether. That's what the leaderboard looks like. Uh, mobile games, some blob games, et cetera, matching games. That's a physics game to keep the hair on the head. That's kind of fun as well. Um, and um, there you go. So if you want to join us, you're welcome to come out to the Zim Forum. That's right here. And send us a message or check out uh, various announcements and questions, see examples, etc. We'd love to have you here. And there's also a Zim on Discord. So that, uh, we primarily work in the forums. And follow us on Twitter. And on YouTube, you may have come through YouTube. Uh, well, this is YouTube. <laughs> you're watching the video now. And uh, I'm glad you're here. Give us a like. Uh, we'd uh, love to hear from you in the forum as well. And this has been Bum Bum Bum. Oh, a side scroller game. Did you like it? It's a long one, wasn't it? But I think it's worth it. And we put all sorts of. You know, other stuff in there as well as more than just the game. It's all information about uh, the types of things you can build with, with physics, etc. Cheers. Have a great day or night. We better shut this one down. Ciao.